Hello, everyone. I'm Matt Clark, Research Analyst with Money Markets here with your Bull and the Bear podcast. Now, if you aren't already, I do want to make sure you are subscribed to our YouTube channel where you'll uh, find new features uh, with Chief Investment Strategist Adam O'Dell, uh, Greens and Fortunes co editor Charles Sizemore, and myself each and every week. Uh, we've also created a new membership program on our channel uh, that gives you exclusive uh, inside information in the cannabis market. That includes uh, market information, stocks, interviews, news, a whole lot more. Uh, and I do want to make sure that you are checking out our uh, website, Money and Markets, every day. Uh, it's moneymarkets.com. Uh, safe, sound, smart, simple, profitable investment information uh, for your portfolio. Uh, our team works very hard to provide you with the best information to bolster your portfolio every day, both on YouTube and on moneyandmarkets.com. So uh, for to join our YouTube channel, if you're not there already, uh, go to youtube.com, search Money and Markets. Uh, once you get to our page, you can just click that subscribe button uh, and then hit the notification bell. Make sure you get notified each and every time we put up a new video. If you're interested in our membership program, uh, very, very simple. Go to YouTube, uh, go to our YouTube page and then just click join and you'll be able to see exactly what uh, information is available at uh, the different tiers and you can sign up for whatever you like or you don't have to entirely uh, up to you. So uh, do you want to make sure you do that? Also sign up for our free daily e-letter at moneymarkets.com. Uh, just put in your email address and you'll get all that safe, sound, smart, simple, profitable investment information delivered to your inbox each and every day for free. Now I'm going to move on with today's podcast. Um, today I'm going to dive a, a little deeper into the gaming uh, sector, uh, some research that I found, and then I'm going to examine the results of uh, one of our uh, latest polls on YouTube. So uh, I'll talk about those two things here. Uh, but <clears throat> first I'll start off, excuse me, with uh, a little bit of gaming sector research. Now, I've been on sort of a gaming kick of late, uh, not really playing because I don't necessarily have the time nor the thumb coordination to do it, but I have been looking at the sector for potential investment opportunities. Um, I wrote a piece for Money and Markets uh, earlier this week about a green zone hot list stock uh, that will capitalize on the broader video game market, but I wasn't really done digging there. Now, today I'm going to tell you what I found and I'm going to give you a recommendation to profit on this information. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, in the piece that I wrote, um, I talked about the surge in the video game industry, uh, but I also found more interesting data uh, that, that points to a particular sector of the industry that is driving all this growth. Now, if you're like me and you have kids, uh, you know they spend what seems to be most of their waking hours playing playing video games. My kids, albeit age 24 and 19, uh, make a mad dash for their rooms, turn on their PlayStation consoles immediately when they get home from work. Um, as for me, I, I also have a PlayStation, but I find myself using it more to watch movies than I do to actually uh, play games. And it's not that I don't want to play games, but my thumbs, again, don't have that requisite uh, coordination uh, to play the games that my, my sons play. And it leaves me a little bit frustrated. But, but I found an outlet, and that outlet is mobile gaming. Uh, these are video games that you basically download to play on your phone or your tablet. Uh, and when I was digging through some stats uh, regarding the broader video game industry, I came across uh, a few that really, really stood out. Now, in 2011, the mobile gaming content market, this is going to be the content that is, that is just for mobile games only, it was valued at just about $2 billion here in North America. And that figure has exploded since then. By 2022, the market's going to see a value of more than $29 billion. That's a 1,350% jump which is a massive explosion in this market. And I think it's one of the main reasons why Electronic Arts Incorporated announced this week it was paying $1.4 billion uh, to buy mobile game developer Playdemic. Uh, just a few months ago, EA dropped another $2.1 billion to buy fellow game, uh, game studio Glue Mobile. And, and if you visit the Apple App Store or, or Google Play, you'll notice there's a lot of console-specific games that have been adapted for mobile gameplay. Games like the popular Call of Duty franchise or even EA's FIFA soccer game, which is one of my favorites, uh, uh, are among some of the many console games that have been reinvented to play on a phone or tablet. And I think there's a few reasons for that. Number one, a, a recent study of purchasing behavior showed that mobile game players spend more than $72 per purchase in the U.S., now compare that to just $55 per purchase for online games based, uh, based on a console or computer and just $31 for downloadable games on a console or computer. It means that mobile game players are spending significantly more to play their, than, their, than, their, than traditional console or computer video game players. Uh, and companies are gonna want a piece of that action. You also have to consider that the console market is relatively thin as experienced by anyone who's been looking to buy a new PlayStation 5 console uh, me included. Um, however, just about everyone from age 15 and up has a smartphone. 
you have one, I have one, most everyone has them. So you've got a big market here for, for, video, uh, for video game developers to market to mobile game players. Then you have the rollout of the 5G communications network. 5G is billed as a network that turns downloading things like movies and games that take hours on 4G to just mere minutes on 5G. And all these factors spell huge profits uh, for companies that are developing mobile games and big profits to smart investors who spot the trends and take advantage of them now. Now, to avoid pouring over charts and graphs and information on hundreds of video game related companies out there, I'm going to recommend that you look at the Global X Video Games and Esports ETF. It trades on the NASDAQ under the ticker HERO, H E R O. It's an exchange traded fund that has a portfolio of about 40, 40 companies that develop or publish video games games, facilitate video game streaming or distribution, or produce hardware used in video games. Now, some of their top listings include C Limited, uh, Nintendo Company, which is an over-the-counter stock, NVIDIA Corporation, which you all know does uh, a lot of graphics cards for, uh, for gaming systems, Activision Blizzard, a very popular gaming uh, ga uh, game manufacturer, Ubisoft, another uh, popular gaming uh, game manufacturer, it trades over-the-counter, and then Electronic Arts, as I mentioned before. Uh, and, and if you look at Hero, over the last 12 months, shares of the ETF have jumped nearly 37%. Uh, they moved as high as 60% into mid-February, but then tech stocks suffered uh, their pullback both in March and then again a little bit in May. Now, I compared Hero to other comparable ETFs, and what I found was that Hero has an expense ratio of about 0.5. Um, others were slightly higher or the same, but none were actually lower than 0.5. So their expense ratio is actually at the low end uh, of comparable ETFs. Uh, Hero also has an indicated annual dividend of about 22 cents per share. Uh, another comparable ETF had a dividend of only eight cents per share. Now there's another uh, ETF out there uh, that has a higher dividend, but its performance is much, much weaker. So I kind of look at all these factors uh, when, when trying to decide uh, of, a, of a possible recommendation. You may get a higher yield uh, in one ETF, but its performance is much lower. So your returns are gonna be much lower. Whereas uh, on the other ETF, the third ETF I compared it to has a much lower dividend, dividend and its performance is about the same. So you have to kind of weigh everything out. And Hero is relatively cheap at around $31 per share. That's in line with the weaker ETF, but half the cost of the ETF with the lower dividend payment. So if you're looking to break into investing in mobile games and the broader video game market, uh, but don't wanna sift through mountains of, of information on specific companies, Hero is certainly worth looking at. Uh, a, a, an inline expense ratio, a higher dividend and lower price point uh, makes it a strong mobile gaming ETF for your portfolio. Now I wanna shift gears. I wanna look at a, a recent poll that we put up on YouTube. We asked viewers uh, if you've experienced a rise in price of everyday goods and services and overwhelmingly, not unexpectedly, 91% of you said, yes, you have. And of course the uh, prices are going up, uh, have been going up uh, steadily over the last several months. Um, John commented on YouTube that he said, I'm in Canada, food prices must be up well over 15%. Uh, Kristen said, uh, car shopping, I, I got a really generous offer to trade in my eight-year-old vehicle, but the price for a newer car was much higher than I expected. And, and Nicole said, got a few quotes to replace a wooden fence and was blown away by the price jump. All these things are right in line with what other, uh, other people are experiencing in North America and, and specifically in the United States. As prices have gone up, inflation has gone up, uh, and, and inflation has been all the talk. Uh, lately in in the financial in, in financial news. However, um, you know, prices have gone up, but there may be some good news on the horizon. Recently, Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Incorporated, uh, which is a leading manufacturer, a global manufacturer of semiconductors, said it was going to prioritize chip manufacturing in its third quarter. Additionally, General Motors uh, topped that by suggesting they're going to start dumping off unnecessary functions in their vehicles to free up a semi semiconductor supply. See, semiconductors are used everywhere, your phone, your computer, your tablet, but they're also used in vehicles. Uh, vehicles are using these with smart displays and things like that. But GM has said, we're going to kind of tail back, uh, pair back what we're using uh, the semiconductors for so that we kind of free up what we have and therefore we can uh, increase our, our automotive supply. And, and this should alleviate pressure all, as well on the global semiconductor supply, which is notably down as we talked about with PlayStation 5s and, and, and consoles being in short supply. A big reason of that is because semiconductors just aren't around to, to supply. Now, one big driver of current inflation rates is a shortfall in automotive supply. By stripping away some of the functions that require semiconductors, as I said, GM hopes to get around the shortage and start producing more vehicles. 
And additionally, I'm also seeing that lumber prices uh, are starting to fall as supply is getting back to pre-pandemic levels. Uh, one lumber composite index I found fell uh, from about $1,210 per, per board foot last week to around $1,000, $1,010 this week. It's still high, but the downtrend is good news. So things are starting to come down a little bit, maybe not as quickly as we'd like, but things are starting to pare back and, and hopefully we start seeing a little bit more norm, normalcy in terms of supply uh, following out of the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, make sure you do check out our YouTube channel, head over to youtube.com, search Money and Markets. Uh, also be sure to subscribe so you get notified every time we post a new video. Uh, you can check out our new video series, Ask Adam Anything. I get to sit down and ask Adam O'Dell anything you like. Just email us your questions at feedback at moneymarkets.com. Uh, Charles Sizemore also has a new video series called Investing with Charles Sizemore. He gives you his take on different stocks, whether he thinks they're good investments for you. Uh, he brings a, about a great perspective on stocks and, and, and things you should definitely take a look at uh, for your portfolio. We've also launched our new membership community on YouTube. Uh, it gives you exclusive content related to the cannabis market. We're going to be adding much, much more to this. Uh, so you want to get involved now uh, to take advantage of all the stuff we're going to be adding uh, in the coming uh, months uh, and so on. And incl what, what includes now is interviews, company breakdowns, uh, advanced insight into our cannabis watch list, uh, a, a, a monthly uh, live chat with me, uh, and, and much, much more. And all that is on our YouTube channel. Now, if you're on YouTube and maybe you want to listen to the Bull and the Bear podcast as a traditional podcast, you can do so. Uh, just check out your favorite podcast syndicator like Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Amazon, Spotify, iHeartRadio. There's a ton. We're on a lot of them. Uh, make sure you subscribe, get alerted every time a new podcast is released. Also, leave us a review or comment on YouTube or your favorite podcast syndicator. I love feedback. I love questions. I love getting asked about things to look at. You can do that by emailing me at feedback at moneyandmarkets.com. Also head over to moneymarkets.com, sign up for our free daily e-letter. Uh, in it, we give you safe, sound, smart, simple, profitable investment information each and every day. Now I've got much, much more coming up. Uh, we'll have Ask Adam Anything. We'll have our marijuana market update coming out next week uh, and a lot more. So make sure you check all of that out on YouTube and on your podcast syndicator of choice. Until then, this is Money and Markets Research Analyst and host of the Bull and Bear Podcast, Matt Clark, wishing you all safe trading.